part of a, you know, a classical education. Um, I think we've kind of lost um, lost sight of that some. Um, but <clears throat> I think it's the kind of thing that kids are, are naturally interested in. You know, you have a, there's a connection to that on a kind of um, primal level that you can't you can't disconnect the kids from. So um, I think they'll advocate for themselves to get access to that kind of stuff. And they, they want it enough. And I think, you know, there are enough um, educators kind of coming up in their careers, you know, looking for the opportunity to kind of develop that, you know, either within the school they're working in or you know, starting a school with that as the, as the theme of the heart of it. Um, for that same reason, you know, just sort of, you know, an instinct. Um, you know, I was mentioning before about, uh, you know, sort of the, the expectations from the system on um, testing and, you know, a sort of standardization of things. I think, um, you know, more and more folks are understanding the value of being able to assess students in multiple different forms. Um, because the, the you know, sort of one size fits all test doesn't necessarily offer you the most information that we get. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily tap into everything that a student knows. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, kind of in an effort to sort of show what we know, uh, it's kind of good to be able to do that through, I would say, art and music and, and other forms. are something that unfortunately has been kind of a missing piece of the puzzle to secondary education. Um, especially nowadays, you know, Child Left Behind, um, there is really strong um, focus on, of course, math and science, and, and that's important. Um, unfortunately, there's been even more of a focus on test taking, um, which I think is a perfect example of, of how the arts can actually help an already existing agenda. Um, something that a lot of teachers and studies have found, you know, going back to Howard Gardner, and you know, there's kids learn in different ways. There's multiple intelligences, and it's not even limited to children. Adults learn in different ways. Um, and equally, people express their knowledge and what they know in different ways. Some can sit down with a bubble test and fill the bubbles and get everything right. Um, and that may mean that they know it, may not mean that they know it. Um, and then for other kids, it's not that black and white. If you speak to them, for example, they can tell you and prove to you that they understand the topic, the theme, uh, whatever's being taught in the curriculum. Um, some kids can even draw you a really good picture. You know, I, my father um, was actually a homicide detective and I get sometimes my inquisitiveness from him and I remember him always telling me stories of when he would be working on a crime case and dealing with a child that may be a witness, the first thing usually that the police or the um, police psychologist would do is sit down and give the kid a pencil and some crayons and a, you know, a piece of paper and just tell them to draw. Draw whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking. And this is even before asking the child questions about the event that actually happened. And sure enough, it would come out on the page. Um, and I, I think that that's, a, that's a, a great example of how the arts can be used to um, express knowledge that children have. And at the secondary level education, that's really what you're looking at. Um, when you're dealing with pre-K, you know, you're trying to create these basic foundations. In secondary education, you're trying to make sure that not only are they retaining the knowledge, but also that they're able to communicate what they have learned. Um, and there are multiple ways of communicating what you learn. Um, and I think that's a, that's a, 
a large, a large part of why the arts need to be considered more as a core subject area um, in secondary education. Um, also, um, you know, what we found, especially here working with the different um, groups that come into the museum, and we get groups from all across the board. Um, we're surrounded by a number of project developments, and most of the children that are in the schools around those project developments, um, all of those children will attend that particular school. Um, and what we found is that there are actually no arts going on inside the school. So even if we're doing a workshop here connected to the exhibit, that may be the only workshop or art making that that kid has gotten, maybe even all semester, um, which is actually very scary, but it even makes our job that more paramount of making sure that when they come here, they're getting a full body experience. They're not just walking through the museum and holding their hands behind their back and let's look and don't touch. You know, they are learning the etiquette of, of going to um, going to a museum, but they're also they're looking at the art and then they're responding by creating art to what they just see. Um, and that that to us is is, is really important. Um, and and it doesn't just stop there on the secondary level. Um, studies have shown and just in conversations. Teenagers and older students that have been exposed to the arts um, at the secondary level at a younger age, um, they become more comfortable with it. Um, we've even noticed that sometimes children that have gone to many museums have had many arts experiences and they'll come in with their parents that maybe didn't have those experiences and the kids are more comfortable in the museum than the adult is. Um, Sometimes, you know, there can be uh, an idea that the arts um, are only for a segmented part of the population, um, which we definitely don't agree. But the reality is that the arts um, are sometimes exposed only to a segment of the population. Um, and the earlier you get that exposure, the more comfortable you become as you're older. Um, and also it's audience development. That child growing up remembers that experience of being exposed young and will then also do that to their own children and their own grandchildren. And so the cycle continues and that's where we can ourselves um, break the cycle of making it limited to this elitist, you know, um, kind of section of the population that's being exposed, um, exposed to the arts. Um, I also believe that um, the arts are not just important to education um, in the academic sense. Um, I think that at its very basic forms, all types of education that happens at the secondary level is, is skill transfer. Um, you're trying to, in a way, you know, find out what kids are good at, which will influence whatever paths they want to take in life in terms of their careers. Um, and the arts, are not always viewed or impressed upon children as a career source. Um, and so I really believe that exposing the kids to the arts in the secondary level can give them the idea that yes, this could be a career option. I could make a living off of being a painter or playing the guitar or being a writer. Um, and that is, that is very important. teaches a lot of things that bridge into uh, uh, the basic subject. Like, music is just really another form of math. Math is, like you know, a lot of our students, especially African-American students, have trouble in math and counting, but well, music teaches all of that. But, you know, half, no, both, no, six, sixteen, no, just another form of math. What I tell my students, if you can take and understand the figuration on, on counting music, you just can't transfer that over. Uh, and that's what uh, one of the things that um, music do in the arts. Also, music kick into all the forms 